G'day. Today we're doing a repair on a VZ Commodore V6, September 2004. Uh, it's got the 4L60E transmission in it. And he's just come in, he's heading through. Um, notice the, the light, or the, um, the warning on the dash has come up. And um, it started shifting a little bit funny for him. So we've had the scanner on it. And we've got a code PO601 and a PO700 uh, control module fault. So we've cleared the codes. They, they've come up a couple of times and this last time they haven't come up. But we're going to just drop the pan off and just have a look what's going on inside. It's done, uh, what's that, 271,000 um, kilometres. So it's probably... Uh, starting to, to wear out as well. And while we're doing the service, we're going to just um, charge the battery up a little bit as well. Uh, we've had a bit of a cold snap here, so um, that can affect the operation of the transmission via the computer as well. So you can see the battery is a little bit flat as well. Um, it is starting, no problems and seems to be driving okay now too so it can be a combination of all those things the, the battery has to be fully charged and um, storing charge properly for the transmission to work properly so I'm just gonna I've checked the oil level it's all fine the oil's not burnt or anything like that I'm um, going to just suck the oil out through the filler tube there, there vacuum pump. Just sucking it out there now, just makes it a lot less messy uh, when you drop the pan, that's all. Especially when they don't have a drain plug. Okay, we've got the pan off. Um, I'm just going to drop that filter. And we're going to just test the um, solenoids. Um, the... 3-2 solenoid, the PWM solenoid, you've got your two shift solenoids there, and your pressure control solenoid up here, but I believe that they're possibly um, okay, um, what I'm suspecting is there'd be a lot of, lot of uh, fine metal in this switch plate here. And another thing I'm also going to do is just whiz off that um, speed sensor there and just make sure there's no fine metal stuck on that while, I'm, while I've got it here. Also nice to just check all these rubbers and CV joints um, that they're all okay while we're under the vehicle. Center bearing of course. Get sick of <laughs> replacing those and just check for any oil leaks or anything that looks out of whack so we're just gonna I'm gonna drop that switch plate and remove these solenoids and just check them now to get these solenoids out um, after you remove the plug um, you just get a really small screwdriver and there'll be a little clip inside that little slot there um, with a little spring steel clip that just holds it there um, same as that one, and same with the shift solenoids. Um, the pressure control solenoid, there's a little bolt there that you undo, and that just comes out. You may have to remove this cover just to be able to slide it out. So make sure you don't mix, mix up the springs and the pistons in this. Just make a note of how it goes before you take it off. And um, the switch plates, just a matter of pulling these... I'll take those bolts off and that'll just drop down. The uh, torque converter solenoid as well as just two bolts there. It, it'll just come down. Okay, I've got the switch plate off and you can see that's probably what's causing the problem. You can see all that fine metal accumulated in there because that's just the way it sits in the on the valve body um, it'll all accumulate there and these are little pressure switches there that um, 
tell the computer what uh, basically what gear you're in. So if they're bridging out or earthing out or not working the way they should be, um, it'll it can send your vehicle into a limp mode. So we're going to replace this because um, in the early days you could actually um, pull these apart and just flush them out. Now they've created this other little plastic cover on there, so it's very difficult to pull them apart and flush them out. And that just sits over the, the whole unit there like that. Um, and it's riveted on, so you can't take it off. You can flush it a little bit, I suppose, but because um, we're doing this job um, in a professional sense, it's just easier and quicker to um, just replace the whole thing. If you were doing it on your own vehicle, then yeah, you might even have a crack at just flushing it out and cleaning it. And there it is, the uh, pressure switch manifold, they call them. Um, and you've got to also make a note that uh, once they open, or once it's installed, you can't send it back. A um, bit hard to, to work out how that works, because if it's faulty, how do you, how do you know until you try it? Anyway, um, we're going to put a new one of these on, and I'm just going to take the other solenoids out and test, test them as well, one by one. And you can see these, um, well, sometimes they come with the black plastic cover. Sometimes they come with this clear or see-through cover. So you can actually, if you peel that up a little bit, I'm not going to do it because it might deform the plastic, but you can lift it up a little bit and just have a peek underneath if you're curious as to see what, what's under there. But basically what happens, all that fine metal accumulates on top of and underneath that little, this little uh, plastic plate there um, that applies that switch. And these um, switches, if you have a look in your shop manual, you'll find some of them are normally open and some are normally closed. When you're putting these switch plates on, you'll find there's two shorter bolts that actually hold it and then these three longer ones go right through the valve body um, and they'll be 8 mil or 516 and the bigger ones will be 38 or 10 mil or close enough to it. Um, when you're bolting it up because there's little seals on on it just make sure you haven't pinched this um, loom guard here just make sure that's nice and free and it hasn't been pinched between um, that plate and the valve body if you've put it on. Uh, if, you, if that happens then um, it won't operate properly. Now when you're taking the shift solenoids out just be aware that one of them will be spring loaded with the valve so just be careful because it might shoot everything out. Um, so I'll just take those out and you just take take the plugs off and just pop those little circlips. Just support it with your finger and it'll just push it out slowly. If you let it just push it out, uh, they'll just fly out and you might lose your spring or wherever, depending on where you're working. I apologise for the lighting, but um, you can see the valve just pushing out there. So. You, you just support the solenoid on there as you're pulling it out so it doesn't shoot that valve and everything out. So I'll just go ahead now and just check those solenoids. Yeah, both shift solenoids, you can see there's quite a bit of uh, fine metal there. Um, so we can flush them out, provided that they're not leaking. So if you have a look, we've got uh, about 60 psi pressure there. And they're normally open. And you can see that one is not leaking at all. And I always try and test it at 10.4 volts. Car battery is considered flat when it's about 10.4 volts. Okay, we've got the other one on, and I've got the air going through, and it's actually locked up. And 
I don't know if you can hear that, but that one's leaking a little bit. And it's also winding up. Probably clutched it out a little bit just by working it like that. Yeah, you can hear it leaking slightly. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera. And it, there you go. I'm hitting the switch on it. And it's actually locked up again. Okay, I've got the PWM solenoid out now. And you can see how much fine metal's on, on there. It's all coming off onto my finger. So I'm just going to flush it out a little bit. And then we'll test, or I'll test it first to see if it's leaking. If it's leaking, uh, there's not much we can do about it. Um, they have a little diaphragm in, in here as well that tears. And uh, sometimes they get out of whack and they leak. So we'll just test it before we um, flush it. If it appears to be okay, I might just flush it. Um, the transmission's done high mileage, so it's... We're trying to keep the cost down to a minimum if possible. Okay, we've hooked it all up. And this one's normally closed. I've got air pressure going into there. And you can see it blew out a bit of rubbish there. But there is a slight leak. Sometimes when you work it through a little bit like that, it'll free it up. And the coils on these are in, um, a part of this plug, so they're actually encased in plastic. So you can't clean them, um, you've got to pull it apart. But because you can't clean them or get to it, um, it also means that that fine metal, you can usually just flush it out. I'm going to replace this one as well. It's it's leaking slightly there, if you can hear that on the camera. And finally, we've got the 3-2 solenoid out. Um, I'm not going to bother with the pressure control solenoid. On these, they rarely play up um, on the 4L60s. Um, and it is actually shifting through nicely. So we're just checking the other ones if they're leaking. Um, because these actually control the pressure in it, um, just the way it's shifting, I could tell that it seems to be okay um, through the gears. So we're just trying to keep the price down or minimum uh, the repair cost on this vehicle. There we go. Now there is a slight leak there. If I put the camera right up to it. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but there is a leak. So we're going to replace this one as well. Now these two solenoids, um, they look very similar. They do have different ohm readings um, on each one. And also the plugs are different. If you can see this one, if you're looking into it like that, um, that one side's wider and one side's shorter. The other one, the grey one, which is the PWM one, um, is the opposite. It'll have like a, a smaller side, smaller um, slot on that side and a wider one on that one. So you can't really mix them up anyway. You can see the magnet's got a fair bit of fine metal on it. Um, if you don't clean these regularly, what happens, all that fine metal, as you saw, um, goes... To the solenoids which are electromagnets so always a good idea to do regular servicing once a year or every 20,000 kilometers and as I like to do um, put that magnet up on the ridge on that little step there just so I can work top and bottom instead of putting it there um, if you if you insist on putting it back in that little spot there, um, what you can do is just hit hit a couple of punch marks from underneath, and that'll uh, raise that magnet off. Okay, I've got the speed sensor out, and you can see also that's got a fair bit of uh, fine metal stuck to it as well. So it's definitely worth taking it out and giving it a clean. And there's quite a bit on the end there where the actual sensor is. 
There we go. Put the speed sensor back in. Good idea to ch double check all your work, make sure everything's where it should be and tight. Now it's just a matter of uh, filling it up with oil and checking the oil level with the motor running um, and at operating temperature. Now I'm just going to take for a test run and see how it feels um, and check the oil level when it gets back um, at operating temperature. There we go, we've taken it for a test run, no codes coming back on and it seems to be shifting a little bit firmer as well. Thank you for watching.